What is going on guys? So in today's video, I'm actually gonna show you how you could go about making those super cool fitness reels, fitness TikToks, the fitness videos that you see all over social media that you wish you knew how to do, but you don't quite have the skill set or knowledge to go about doing so. In today's video, I'm gonna show you exactly how I go about editing my personal fitness reels on an app called CapCut. So I'm gonna go into my phone right here I'm gonna open up my screen recording real quickly, and I'm gonna actually take you through a step-by-step -step process of what I actually do to go about editing my own fitness reels. So you can find the app called CapCut on the App Store, just go ahead and download it, it's free. Once you download it, you can open it up and start a new project. Now, just to show you an example of a reel that we're gonna be making today, I'm gonna to open this up right here. All right, super simple, super clean, great for the algorithm, great to actually grow your account, bring in new followers, build an audience, and actually build a, a brand or a business around your passions, around your passion and doing what you love. So what I'm gonna do actually is go ahead and open this file here because I'm gonna be extracting the audio from here because that's the audio I wanna use. So go ahead and extract the audio right here. Now I'm gonna drag the raw file into here. I'm gonna take this, I'm first going to edit it and rotate it. Boom. Once it's rotated, now it's just a raw video clip that I shot of me in the gym and the, and the sound we're gonna be using. So first, what you wanna do is just find a part that looks like a cool intro to the sound. I honestly think right where I started it, for me walking away is pretty cool. So I'm gonna start it from right here. Let me mute it. So every time you hear like a change in the beat or a change in the song or a change in the sound you're using, that's when you wanna cut the clip and transition into a, a, a next part. So I'm gonna take the clip right here, re-listen. That's a great part to transition. So I'm gonna split right here. And now I'm gonna continue moving forward into my clip and find the next part that I wanna add in. So I honestly think right here is really cool when I'm doing the Arnold pose, whatever pose this is, I have no clue. So I'm gonna forward it right here. And if we replay it now, it's gonna have the beginning clip and then transitioning into what I just added. I just paused it. Now what you could do actually is you could look at the sound and you can actually see on the bar where it transitioned and where it changes. So you can see right here where I paused it on the sound bar, there's a change in the sound or you could just listen to it. All right, so I'm gonna pause it right there, split again. Now slide over and find a different part of the clip that I may wanna put into my video. I'll keep going. Maybe me here doing a double bicep pose, right? Started right there. So I'm gonna split this, go ahead and delete all this cause I don't want it. Now you're gonna see. Pause it right there. The beat is about to change again. So for the final clip, I'm gonna split this and find one cool takeaway pose that I might be able to throw in at the end here. Maybe this tricep. Ooh, that looks clean. That's what I'm gonna use right here. So I'm gonna split it right here. Boom. Delete all this part over here because I'm not gonna use that. And we can see how it flows in. Perfect, perfect. Now, what I can actually go about doing is just splitting the clip right there, getting rid of that part, getting rid of this, getting rid of this. And now I have the whole thing here, right? So we're not actually done yet. Once we have the framework built out of the clip, now we wanna add some sort of effects. What I like doing in my personal style, your personal style may be different. Over time, you're gonna develop your own personal style. But what I like doing is slow zooms in all of my I was about to curse. I'm on YouTube. This is my first video. I'm sorry. I'm going to do a slow zoom in like all of my clips. So I'm going to add a keyframe right here in the beginning of the clip. I'm going to drag over all the way to the end, add another keyframe, right? And then I'm going to zoom in 
at that second keyframe added. So what that does is that this keyframe is not zoomed in and over time it's gonna zoom in to the position I put it at that keyframe. So now it's a slow zoom effect. Right? What I'm gonna do now is just add another keyframe to this clip, add it to the end of that clip, zoom in on the end of that clip. Now it's a slow zoom effect in that clip. I'm gonna go ahead and repeat the process in the last two clips I have. Boom. And right here, boom. Now we have the so slow zoom effect across all of our clips. Looking clean, looking clean. That's looking perfect right there. But the last thing we have to do is bring back the flavor into this footage because this is shot raw off my camera. So the last thing I wanna do is add that color, that filter, that color correction, color grade, whatever you wanna call it, back into the clip. So what you could do is go back to the bottom of your app, click on adjustment right here. And now this is gonna add an adjustment layer which you could put on top of all the clips and it's gonna add a filter effect upon everything that you're hovering it over. So the first thing I wanna do is drop the exposure. I always like to go very dark. Cap cut exposure honestly doesn't do much, so I always drop it around 10, maybe even 15. Boom. Next thing I wanna do is drop the saturation just a bit. I like my colors very dark, very blue. If you like yours more um, vibrant, you might wanna up the saturation. Of course, I'm gonna drop my brightness as well, because as I said, I like my colors very dark. This is a raw clip out of my camera, so what I'm going to do is up my contrast a bit just because it's lacking a lot of contrast. And I'm going to go to my highlights and just to bring up the brightness a bit without over brightening it. I'm gonna up my highlights. Now, the vignetting adds the very deep, dark effect. If you go too much, it's too much vignetting. I like to put it at maybe five, six, just enough so it's there at the corners, but not totally in the middle of the screen. Go opposite, it looks like that. So I'm gonna put it at six. And last but not least, um, what else do I wanna do? Polish, and you can actually do something, but you can play with the HSL. And when you open up HSL, it allows you to uh, manipulate all the colors in the actual video. So my skin tone is orange. If I click orange and drop the saturation, it's gonna rip out all the colors out of my skin tone. So I don't really like to play with reds too much, um, oranges too much, but as you can see here, Go to this part of the video. You see that red sign in the back? Maybe I wanna take out the color from that red sign. So I'm gonna go to red here and drop the saturation. You see the red sign in the back going down? But it's also gonna play with my skin tones because as I said, I don't like to mess with reds and oranges too much. But if there's a blue in your video or a, a purple in your video or green that you wanna take out, you could go click on green, bring that down and it'll take out the greens in your video. So now we have the fresh, clean cuts and clean chops on our sound, on our sequence. We have the slow zoom effects, and we just added it an adjustment layer with our color correction. As you can see, this is adjustment layer. Wherever the adjustment layer is hovering over, that's where the color correction is gonna affect. So this is how it looks with it. Once you go off of it, that's how it looks originally. So that's the actual difference that we went about making with that color correction. So I'm gonna drag this adjustment layer throughout the entire video. And now I'm gonna export this video. I shot this video on my camera at 24 frames per second, so I wanna export it at 24 frames. If you shot it at 60, you could export it at 60, whatever. Another thing, even if you shot your footage at 4K, in order for it to look best on Instagram and TikTok, you wanna export it out of your app at 1080p. So I'm gonna add 24 frames per second, because that's what I shot it on, and I'm gonna put 1080p. 4K, even if you shot it at 4K, Instagram is gonna compress it anyway, so you might as well put it on 1080p and save some of your quality in the compression, right? And then you export it. Boom. And now we have a perfectly edited, perfectly clean fitness, real fitness TikTok that you could go ahead and upload and use to grow your account, grow your audience, to start to build that brand, that personal brand, and start to build a business around your passion, right? And just so we could go ahead and watch what we made, let me go into my... Camera, boom, boom. This is what we made. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. So 
That is how you go about making a fitness reel, fitness TikTok. If you like this video, go ahead and like the video. Go ahead and comment and tell me what I could work on better for my future videos and go ahead and subscribe. This is the first video on this account that I've uploaded. I've never really shot a YouTube video before, so if I'm a bit awkward on the camera or I'm messing up here and there, cut me some slack. This is my first video. I, pre I appreciate you guys. Go ahead and show me some love. Subscribe, like, and I will holla at you guys next time when I decide to put out another video. Maybe it'll be in a couple days from now, maybe a week from now. Definitely not longer than two weeks from now. So stay tuned for all the content I will be dropping on this account. Peace out, guys.